I've challenged a team of Minecraft writers and developers to improve all of Minecraft's most boring mobs. And they've started us with the Glow Squid. Now, when it comes to vanilla Minecraft, Glow Squids aren't really much for actual light-emitting creatures. And its Glow Ink Sack drop is useful, but it's pretty niche in terms of its use cases. I'm curious to see what they've done here. So far, it looks exactly the same. Let's try it underwater. It's got its glow. Interesting. Oh, whoa, what's that? Ooh, there's another one over here. Wow, I just noticed something. If you are in actual darkness in a cave, these little splotches of light appear if there are glow squids nearby. You notice if I were to kill all of the glow squids, these would instantly die and the lighting would go out. Okay, glow squid can be fed coal to grow larger. An interesting choice. Why don't we go ahead and give it a shot? Oh, that is certainly getting bigger than the other ones. Oh, and a little bit of damage. How about one that's closer to being in open waters? Now, I'm not entirely sure what is going on with the choice here, but it's definitely a sight to see a squid that big. And apparently, if you feed it glowstone, it will summon a glowing orb that will follow the player. So we're gonna lower our darkness down to a pretty crazy level so we can see what this looks like. All right, check it out. You're gonna have some glowstone dust. There we go. And look, there's the particle effect. Interesting. So what happens? <gasps> Whoa, it follows us around and actually causes light to appear wherever it's at. And now you've got a little mini torch that will follow whenever you're exploring a new cave area. A pretty cool effect. Up next are cave spiders. Currently, the biggest difference between spiders and cave spiders is that cave spiders can poison you. Beyond that, there's no difference in their drops, and they both have mob spawners you can find, so you may as well opt for the safer one. Unless you're one of those hardcore min-maxers or something. So check this guy out. He's huge, but he's only part of the story. There are also now tiny cave spiders as well. These guys have some pretty interesting effects. First of all, the tiny ones will actually run from you. They have no interest in attacking you. But if you do happen to kill one of them, you'll see that they give you a brand new drop. Come here, little bugger. <laughs> oh, he did bite back. Yeah, I'd be careful when you corner them. Either way, you can get a new item known as the spider gland. But hold on, the dev is saying that if a giant cave spider is nearby, that will apparently rally the rest of them? Let's see. Oh boy. Well, they don't appear as... Oh no, they're coming back now. Oh, okay. I gave myself resistance. They are all after me. Oh my goodness. You can still pick off the baby ones if you can good enough to get a shot on them. Now I'm curious what happens if we kill the big spider. Yep, it looks like we got a gland there as well. And instantly the baby baby ones begin fleeing. Okay, what else did they add? Giant cave spider has more health and attack damage. <laughs> I could have known that a little bit ago. Ah, and you can use them to poison weapons. That would explain the cow. So what happens? Oh yeah, you are poisoned now. You can even use it to make shields with poison. And if you were to use the poison shield to butt away a mob, it will also cause that given mob poison damage. Oh, hello. I'm going to note these two is feeling a little overpowered. And that's going to be important to keep in mind because at the end of the video, I'll be rating all the various improvements for believability. But let's find out more then about the Warden, because this is the next mob that has seen some kind of improvement. Currently, Wardens are good for making diamond collection a little riskier, and having no drop is reasonable because that's not really the point. But surely something could be done here. What do you think? <laughs> oh boy. Well, I've got a nice poison shield here, so that should help a little bit. Oh, well, creative mode it is. Okay, so the development team added Skulk beacons to this guy's drop. Let's see what this thing does. All the sign says is that they're stronger than regular beacons, so I'm curious. Whoa. Look at this thing. Interesting. Ooh, and it looks like it's... Whoa! It's causing an actual hole. Whoa! Look at this. Adding a beacon effect still looks exactly the same, but the beacon effect works from super far away. Yup, as I thought, the beam did break through the surface. Okay, next up, they chose the pig. Yes, you can saddle them, but that was added before horses were in game. Since they've been added, riding pigs is kind of obsolete. That and cooked pork chops heal just as well as cooked beef. Cows also have having leather as drops, I could see this being a good mob to try and improve. Well, it looks the same, but based on what they gave me, and according to this sign, the pig can be equipped with an armor and a sword. So why don't we go, oh, look at that. Well, it looks like he's been playing in the mud a little bit. Hold on, we now have an armored pig and we can still use it to ride around. It says using a carrot on a stick will make it dash forward. It sure does. That is very fast. What does it do to mobs? 
Nothing. Actually, it says it'll spike mobs if it has a sword equipped. Can I give you a sword? Whoa, I did. It's got a spiked helmet now. Okay, let's see this in action. Whoa, it does. It damages the mobs. Hold on, let's put a few of these bad boys down instead. Get on, little piggy. Boom. Wow. I could see this being very helpful. And even being damaged, the pig doesn't take much because of the armor we gave it. It's being slammed on. They're all going for the pig. And it hasn't taken any damage yet. This could be very useful. But is it overpowered? We'll talk about it later. Okay, the developers decided to improve Allays next. This looks like it's gonna be very complicated. Currently, Allays act somewhat like a scavenger, picking up nearby items depending on the one you gave them. But those types of items have limits, and that's kind of prevented them from being mass adopted. So apparently, the Allay can be given various items that will change the behavior of them. Oh boy, these look good. Apparently, if you give an Allay a furnace, it can actually, well, or the shield. I prefer you take my furnace, friend. Giving it a furnace will allow it to smelt things for you. Check this out. It will turn those logs into charcoal and will turn nearby raw ores into their ingot form. Ooh, apparently if we give it a crafting table, it can actually compress items for us. I want to see what this is all about. So, we'll put some nuggets down and see what happens. Instantly turned into ingots. Now what were to happen if I were to put some ingots down instead? Wow. And hey, if I'm looking at these correctly, I have a feeling we're going to be able to use the allays to enchant. Check this out. Drop a sword down. And what happens here? Well, he does look a little dance party, it seems. <laughs> that is something to make note of. This is a little bit bug-like, but hold on a second. Didn't like the sword. Why don't we try it again? There we are. Perfect. This sword got a knockback one enchantment. Now, what were to happen if we were to drop a plain pickaxe down as well? Let's see. It looks like if I drop it on the edge of a block, it doesn't work as well. Right in the center, though. Ooh, there we go. It got it. And we got fortune two for that. Oh, he's a little shy. These are kind of like free enchantments, so I'm gonna make note of that for later. Oh boy, they've had us update Vexus next. Currently, Vexus have no drop at all. The only reason to kill them is so that they don't kill you. They look like they got a lot harder based on some of the things that they're holding. So I've given myself resistance in anticipation of trying to battle them. It looks like sometimes they'll drop lava if they're holding lava buckets. And on top of that, they've been given different items like TNT as well. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I gotta clear them. This one's even got a bow over there. Interesting. The rest have learned their lesson and are flying pretty far away. But this one with a lava bucket is a serious griefer. I'm not sure how realistic it'd be to have lava all over. I did notice, though, they have a drop now called Vex Wings, which I guess can be used to create winged elytra. Okay, what's this about? Hold on a second. Whoa, interesting. And where is this equipped? I still have my tunic on. There's a whole new inventory slot. So if I were to fly around, I can actually flap. And it gives off some pretty cool camera elements too. Okay, they've decided to update foxes. And as you saw, taming foxes is a lot more of an exercise in patience. And their use as an ally in general is limited. Bruh. Let's see what they've done here. It looks like they're holding leather or behaving as normal at least. What about when I kill one? Ooh, fox pelt. Well, I should have guessed there's a bunch of crafting tables. Fox now drop fox pelt that can be crafted into fox pelt armor. Ooh, helmet chest plate, leggings, and boots. Pretty interesting idea that there's a set effect, although I did notice that even when we're wearing the fox belt helmet, it doesn't show up. Taking off my cape and wings, you can see the backside of it. Okay, sure. And what else does it do? Ooh, it will stop foxes from running away when I'm wearing it. Well, that is immediately true. So now these guys are super easy, in theory, to be able to tame, because they don't, I, they don't really go anywhere, do they? Hey! I guess they also give nearby buffs to any foxes that happen to be around yeah, interesting. One hit. I've taken off the armor, and as you can see, it now takes a couple hits for foxes to kill a chicken. With the armor fully on, though, it is open season for these poor birds. They've even added an effect that keeps other hostile mobs from not easily as seeing you from far away. See, they're not even after me despite being so close. Pretty unique choice for implementation. Okay, now we've been given a mountain goat. Now, they do have a goat horn drop, but it's not too useful in single player. 
And you can get milk from them, but you can also get that from cows, which at least have a chance to give you leather. So I can see this being a good pick for improving. It does have a new type of texture. It's pretty interesting looking. Okay, so the sign says that goat can be milked to give it a bit of extra healing when you drink it. So now, this is a different type of milk. As you can see here, I've got a lot of negative effects on me. Now, drinking this milk will instantly clear them and also give me four seconds of regen. So now you have good reason to milk these guys, but apparently they also have a new drop type, cashmere. You can take cashmere to get a pouch, which seems to be a way to access the bundle system that has yet to be actually released in current versions of Minecraft. But check that out. We have, I think I put the bundle in my bundle. <laughs> Pretty big bug, noted for later. Okay, so they decided to update the llama. These guys are mostly useful only when moving bases. And their spit is not that useful from an offensive perspective. Okay, so apparently the llama can now be controlled like a horse can. Whoa, when I I move around i have free reign over wherever it goes i can even get it to jump a little bit too and i'm pretty sure it's true look at this i can actually right click to take out any mobs that are in front of me now the head seems to be bugging a little bit so i'm gonna make note of that <laughs> maybe he's just getting the spit ready in his mouth huh the devs did give me blaze spawn eggs though so i'm curious oh wow what is that a one hit is that what i just saw one hit on blazes. How about for Endermans? This shouldn't even work, right? Whoa, it could even get the Endermans. Nice. Oh, and on top of that, you can use it to fertilize crops and fill up cauldrons. Interesting. Spitting on this did, in fact, fill up that cauldron. I'm not sure I'd want to put a bucket into a cauldron to spit. And here we have a Piglin Brute. Currently used to spice up a player encountering a Bastion in-game, these guys have very little payoff compared to how difficult they are to kill. But apparently now they give a new boy, a new total totem drop so why don't we give that a shot and see how awesome this totem well <laughs> creative mode it is why don't you go ahead and disappear my friend all right so we got the nether totem ah i see so this totem gives you longer fire resistance compared to the regular totem of undying as confirmed right now we'll open up this and see that we get exactly a total of 40 seconds of fire resistance with a plain totem of undying and by holding a nether totem we instead get a fire resistance amount of wow three minutes nice but on on top of that, they apparently knock away mobs that are around us when these totems are used. So I'm going to spawn in a couple of these guys and hold some of these totems. As you can see there, ooh, they all got hit with something there. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Let's try that again. I'm going to quickly hold the totem. You can see in first person, wow, something happened there. In third person, yeah, wow, it took out almost all those mobs. It's time to figure out this guy's grade. And how they grade is important because only the best improvements are up for a revisit down the road to add them in to a mod pack. So now I'm going to rate all the different mob improvements we just saw S through F. If you've never seen this rating system before, all you need to know is that S is the best, A is great, C is middle of the road, D is not looking so good, F is no chance. I liked the glow squid in practice. Those little light globbles that would appear on the ground nearby when the squids were spawning in made some sense. Maybe it was spores or something. But I didn't really understand making it bigger by giving it coal or feeding it glow stone dust for that matter to get flying sparkle effects like where are they coming from it doesn't seem to make much sense attached to the squid just like this poor glow squid i have a feeling this one would die before it was released by minecraft but the other effects were cool so i'll give it a d tier the different types of cave spider types were a lot of fun they did give use to cave spiders in the form of new drops and it was a really cool concept to make them all flee if their big friend wasn't around but their drops are pretty overpowered giving us the ability to poison any weapon in instantaneously might make the game a little unbalanced. With some changes, it could work, so I'm gonna place them in the A tier. Okay, where would I put the warden? Um, huh. well, depending on if I'm on his good side or not, I'm inclined to say a little bit low, primarily because he's just got such a powerful beacon now. And he's mean to llamas. The beacon effect is cool and could be used for something like a vertical drill and with an effect system that works from super far away, which makes me think of the wither versus the warden. The warden is gonna be a far easier fight to take on compared to the wither which is the current way you get a nether star to make an existing beacon. With the warden being an easier fight compared to the wither and having a better type of beacon. So for that, I'm going to put you in the D tier. A little overpowered. 
Uh, looks like the squid, uh, seen better days. No, you're not so I just put a new one in there. This will count. The pig, I could see being useful in some sense. You know, first things first, though. I mean, what, what kind of mud is he playing in exactly? Let's get some of the pink action in there. But in terms of the use, I like it because you can upgrade the pig, and he's not that much greater than actual defense, but in the event you're, I don't know, getting some of your crops ready nearby, you didn't have your sword with you, all you brought was your hoe, and whatever else, this would be great to defend the crop field in a quick pinch. Having one of these guys around, not a bad idea. And maybe something a little more believable than giving it spikes with a sword. If it's covered in mud, the pointed dripstone would be a great option to have you stick to it. I'm gonna give this mob a middle of the road for now. Okay, for the LA, I love the ideas that the team put together. The ability to auto smelt items is extraordinarily helpful and really not that overpowered if I'm being honest. I mean, these guys are difficult to free in the first place. But I'm not gonna lie, the enchantment table stuff, it's a little too much. You basically have infinite enchantments for any amount of weaponry, armors, tools, whatever it might be. I mean, honestly, if it weren't for these bugs, it'd be getting you <laughs> overpowered way faster. Just check this out. We got Bane of Arthropods, Knockback, Smite, Fire Aspect, all for free. You could take that to an anvil, and all of a sudden, you've completely unbalanced the enchantment system. With proper balancing of some of those features, I could see it living in A, but with its current mechanics, you're gonna be in the C territory. Notice, uh, we've switched, uh, huh. I've started detecting a pattern with mobs not wanting to stay where they're supposed to. Vexes were very unique in this project. I thought it was very cool that the team decided to give them all sorts of different abilities. The lava one, though, is extraordinarily overpowered and does not speak to something Mojang has ever done, or at least has avoided trying to do. Oh no, my rankings! I forgot they do that. <laughs> and that's kind of the point. Minecraft does not add mob features that can cause physical block damage to the game, except when caused by player error. Creepers only blow up around you, never without you. You could say the Vexes don't do that either because they have to be around you to have it happen, but the lava and the TNT seems a little over the top. But the idea of having wings as a drop from Vex is a very fun one, if only as a cosmetic for the Elytra. Currently, you can go whatever direction you want without having any rockets on you. It feels a little overpowered, but I'm all for adding in cosmetics to Minecraft. For now, we're gonna put Vexes in the A tier. The Fox one is a lot of fun. These guys are a pain to try and gather when you are not in creative mode. They will instantaneously flee the scene. And having armor that makes it more difficult for mobs to see you from a distance is a pretty unique idea. It's actually how mob heads currently work. But, well, not the dragon one. These are so difficult to come across, it doesn't feel like it takes that much from them. The fox was pretty spot on. I'm gonna place you squarely in the tier A. The goat I was also a fan of. Now, when you milk these guys, you actually have an additional incentive compared to regular cows, which makes them have a justification to turn them into farms. It'd be more useful if milk actually stacked, but it doesn't. The ability to turn their drops of cashmere into pouches, though, is awesome. That funny bug did come up earlier where I accidentally placed a pouch within itself, but in the event you can avoid doing that, even so, this feels a little overpowered to get as a drop from goats. Maybe if the recipe was more expensive, took eyes of ender, perhaps even diamonds? Otherwise, you've just completely eliminated the need for shulker shells. Would have been an S, but because of that overpoweredness, we're gonna drop you down to the A tier. Okay, look, being able to ride a llama anywhere is pretty cool. However, it comes with a saddle right off the bat. It's already faster than numerous horses you can find, capable of jumping, and has a spammable right-click weapon. On top of that, can take out instantly one of Minecraft's more difficult mobs. And the glitching head is the cherry on top. A fun idea, but I'm gonna go ahead and place you in the F tier. Sorry, your, your pen area is ugly too. And so here we are with the Piglin Brute. Personally, I love the idea of giving the Piglin Brutes a special type of drop. Unlike regular piglins, the brutes will only spawn in once upon structure generation, so there's only ever a few per bastion remnant you find in the nether. Once you've killed all the brutes, you won't be able to get more of their nether totems. Contrast that with evokers that are technically farmable by causing yourself to have tons of raids in game. Nether totems aren't as farmable and only give a slight improvement over a totem of undying, namely that fire resistance buff we saw earlier. So for having such re 
reasonable balancing, I place the Piglin Brute into the S tier, the only one to make it. Overall, I think my developer did a pretty good job. But what do you guys think? 